Let's talk about Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, For those who don't know, I am a uh, very big fan of Star Wars, as you can see from these posters. Uh, You might be able to see I have a bunch of board games that might or may not be related to Star Wars. I have uh, two tattoos. There's one of them that are Star Wars related. So uh, I was pretty pumped for this movie, as you can imagine. And I saw it twice in a row. And it was very bad, which is very unfortunate. Um, I am in the very fortunate camp of people that really, really love pretty much all things related to Star Wars. I really like all the movies besides this one. Um, I'm a super big fan of The Clone Wars and Rebels. And uh, from what I've seen of Resistance, I haven't finished season two yet. Um, The Mandalorian's great. A bunch of the video games are great. A bunch of the books are great. But this, unfortunately, is not. And there's a couple reasons for that. Um, How do I put this lightly? Uh, The movie looks bad. If you've seen the trailer, there's some really nice shots. Those are the good shots in the movie. There may be, like, one or two other ones... But almost all the good shots are the ones in the trailer, which is usually the case in trailers. You want to be wowed right there. But everything else in the movie just looks really flat. Nothing pops out at you. Everything looks like it was made by a machine and not a person. It looks soulless, which is a very unfortunate thing to say, but that's the biggest problem with this film is everything feels a little soulless. Too much of it is catering to the fans and not in a good way. There were some very clear examples of where they could have diverged into something that was more fan servicey and it would have worked fine with the story, but instead they have to take detours just to introduce a character we've seen before or have a single cameo and that's the biggest problem is there were like two cameos of people from the original trilogy when there could have been so many more from the original trilogy from rebels from even clone wars from a couple people this could have been the the bridge the the to bridge the gap between the shows and the movies, but it wasn't, which is okay. But it's a little annoying when you like think you're gonna get it because of what they're doing right in that moment, and then you just don't. It's annoying. One word to describe it. Um, let's talk about some good stuff real quick before I go back into why it's bad. Uh, the acting is pretty much all phenomenal. Ray, Daisy Ridley, fantastic. Uh, My boy Adam Driver as Ben Solo slash Kylo Ren, jaw-dropping. Seriously, he's one of my favorite actors. His performance in the the sequel trilogy is better than anyone else, and one of my favorite performances by him in general. He's really, really, really good. Uh, And then Oscar Isaac's also really good in this movie, and John Boyega is as well. Back to the bad. Finn doesn't even really have an arc in the movie. He kind of just walks around with the other characters and interacts with them without ever adding anything meaningful to their plot, their arc, or even his arc. He feels like a filler character, which is not a good thing when he's one of the main characters of the trilogy. Speaking of main characters of the trilogy, let's look at uh, The Last Jedi, which I personally is my favorite movie. It's uh, uh, Rose, who some people did not like. I do not understand why. I really like her. Uh, She's sidelined, which is very annoying because when she's set up as a main character in the eighth movie, 
to sideline her in the ninth feels disingenuous to the people that enjoyed her, to the creator that you were supposed to be working with. It just feels a little icky. And instead, JJ introduces other female characters that have no arc either and are mostly filler, specifically two. And that's really unfortunate because all of the things that they did could have been accomplished by Rose. And it's just, it's just baffling why JJ decided to introduce so many bland characters in the last movie of the saga instead of relying on the characters that have had two movies to grow or uh five in regards to some of them speaking of female characters leia um really really not not a good character in this one i know that carrie fisher unfortunately passed away before this film even started uh, being filmed, which is very sad. She was amazing. She's amazing in the original trilogy. She's amazing in episode seven and eight. But it just feels kind of shitty for her character. She feels sidelined once again. It seems like JJ knew that he had to put Ray in the movie because he, you know, he made her and she's the main character, but he can't make any other female characters competent. Instead, they're used as stepping stones for either male characters or the main character. And it's unfortunate because it also lines up with the fact that these people are, these women, some of them are women of color. Uh, even Finn, who is uh, black, he is sidelined. All of these people of color are just kind of being sidelined. And I don't know if that was intentional. I hope it wasn't. But it's just... It feels really icky, as I said, because these characters I've grown to love. Ray is fantastic, but I really love Finn, and I really love Rose, and I really love Oscar Isaac. And Oscar Isaac, he was in the movie pretty prominently, which was great, because his delivery, his back and forth between Finn and Ray, fantastic. There's some cup. The good things about Finn are there's a couple moments of clarity, of beauty, and of funniness. He's very funny with the other two actors, and everyone looks like they're having a really fun time. I just wish they were having a really fun time while making a good movie. There's a lot of really bad twists in the movie, too. There's the big main one, the big reveal that I think is pretty bad. I think they could have handled it correctly. It still wouldn't have been my favorite, but they could have done it better, and they did not. Instead, you're given a ton of information right in like the first six minutes, and then a ton more like 45 minutes in. And both of them feel like exposition dumps in the worst way possible. And None of it feels earned, and it just feels like J.J.'s throwing things at your face. Which is very annoying when this movie is, I think, two hours and about 14 minutes. If it was three hours, he could flesh out these characters more, he could flesh out these storylines more, but instead everything feels so rushed, but also, at the same time, extremely boring. The first hour of this film is awful. There's a billion planets they go to. I think they go to like five planets and they're all really bland. I don't understand how that's possible. Seven and eight both gave us really cool environments and planets. Nine gives us like super generic planets. There are at least inhabitants and other planets from earlier films that even though the planet might not be the best, the inhabitants make it better. Not in this case, the one plan, there's one planet they go to where there's a bunch of really cool looking guys, but they see him for like a minute and then they leave. And which is unfortunate because there's really cool puppetry on there. Speaking of a good thing, going back, jumping around. Babu Frick or Freak, Babu Freak. Uh, you might have seen him. He's in a promotional material, uh, he was a little droid smith, and he's very tiny, and he speaks in 
I don't know what his language is, but he's very cute. His puppet is very nice, and I love him. He's the best. He is one of the good parts of the film. So, let's go over the good parts one more time. Babu Freak, the acting, the soundtrack, John Williams, very good. Not anywhere close to the best. Uh, seven and eight, I think, are really, really top tier. Maybe not the best, but really, really good in comparison to some of the other Star Wars ones. I think they're all really good, all of these soundtracks by John William. But nine, unfortunately, doesn't have some of that magic, some of that pizzazz. Another good thing that I, like, wasn't expecting is I really liked C-3PO in this movie. I'm not the biggest fan of C-3PO. In fact, I would not say I'm a fan of him. Uh, I think that his character in the original trilogy was a little too mean-spirited, a uh, little too mean to R2-D2, and that also was just added to the fact that Anthony Daniels notoriously was very rude to uh, Kenny Baker, the, the man who was inside R2-D2 who played him. And that just left a bad taste in my mouth because he acts pretty much the same on screen. So that mean-spiritedness just wasn't for me, and I never really laughed at any of his jokes. He felt like just comic relief in the worst sense. Like, for example, crazy, crazy man coming in. I don't mind Jar Jar because he at least has a bigger impact on the story and he ties well together with the themes of episode one. C-3PO is just a robot that hangs around. But in this, he actually does things. He actually says some funny jokes and he's more lighthearted and kind, which is nice to see. Uh, so... I like that. Uh, there are a couple fight scenes in the film that are pretty well done, at least choreography-wise. Um, there's the one that you see in the trailer where they're on, like, the water. They're on, like, a crashed part of something, and they're on the water. That's really good, and in the best of ways, reminds me of a prequel fight, as in they're jumping around and having tons of fun. That was, I really like that one. Unfortunately, there's a couple like camera angles and shots that just feel really bad. So I wish that they had done a better job filming it because then it might have been one of my favorite fights in like the whole sequel trilogy. Um, there is another fight in uh, a white room. I'll say that's that's all I'm going to say. White Room, that's really well done, too. Has a lot of, like, exposition that's not super well done, but better than, like, the other two exposition dumps. That one's fun as well. But, like I said, a lot of the camera angles and shots and just everything they did just felt too clinical. N none of it had, like, the emotional rawness I want from a Star Wars film. Everything felt artificial. And I know it's a sci-fi film or it's a space opera and space operas um, aren't real, but I want to feel emotion. And I unfortunately didn't feel almost any emotion watching The Rise of Skywalker. Um, the ending, this big giant confrontation wasn't nearly as epic as it could have been. It was filled with bad fan service that when I wanted good, but they didn't, they put in fan service, but they didn't put it up quite enough. So it just feels bland and it feels unneeded. And like none of it was epic. None of the fight wasn't very good. The dialogue was okay. And the space battle was at the same time, okay. And it's so unfortunate because this, the movie, the first half is very bad. There's not a lot of good scenes in it, unfortunately. But the second half is filled with either pretty good scenes or scenes that are almost good. Like the film tries so hard to being good and it's so close, but on all, almost all fronts it fails. And it kind of fails miserably because it all fronts it's bad. Like I said a couple good things, but it's just... It's just really boring and really disappointing because if th this had nailed the landing, if this had stuck the landing, the sequel trilogy would have been my favorite trilogy in the series. But now it's by far the worst because I disliked this film so much. Um, 
Thank you for watching. If you wanted my rating of it, I'm going to give this one a 3 out of 10. Um, I, I'm, I'm pretty sad. I'm pretty disappointed. But not every movie is going to be good. Uh, we shouldn't send death threats to people. Okay? Going to put that out there. All you Last Jedi haters, maybe don't send death threats to the director this time. I know it's JJ and you love JJ. But... Uh, don't send death threats and just be happy for all the great Star Wars things we got this year. Uh, the Mandalorian's fantastic and, uh, Jedi Fallen Order is fantastic as well. And we're still going to get the Kenobi series and Deborah Chow proved herself with her episode of The Mandalorian. So I think it's going to be really good. And, uh, yeah, if you haven't watched the channel before, you should. Hit that subscribe button. We have a weekly podcast. You should hit that bell icon so you can watch me rant about Star Wars occasionally or talk about new movies I see. Um, and yeah, if you like the movie, I'm really glad. I really do. Wa I really, really wanted to like the film. But I watched it twice and it got worse the second time, which I was so sad. I was so hoping it would get better. I watched it in IMAX and IMAX 3D and neither of them looked very good. And that's so unfortunate. But I really, really hope you like it. And I really, really hope you have a good day. I'm London, signing off. Duh!